What's going on guys? Dr. D here bringing you a recap from our most recent Friendly War Challenge with WHF2. Um, it's been actually, we've only used the Friendly War Challenge twice now, uh, not counting an interfamily scrim that we used it just to try and figure out the ins and outs of it. Um, but uh, this war was, it was a lot of fun. So we've had a couple of um, arranged wars that have fallen through in the past week and, or, or yeah, I guess it's been about a week. And so lots of farm wars, um, a random elite war thrown in there uh, with a recap coming on that soon. Um, but uh, I wanted to get this one recorded right away because these friendly war challenges tend to disappear pretty quickly. So as you can see here, um, we managed to eke them out by a couple of stars, 79 to 77. Um, props to our six-pack warriors here, uh, Trumpy, Town Hall 11. Um, these, were, these were actually Town Hall 10 dips, uh, but still, six-packs. And, and uh, what we're finding out is no longer is um, a, a 11 on a 10 a sure thing, not like it used to be. So uh, props to you, Sports Buff. Um, I'm going to show an attack by Sports Buff today because this guy is just, um, I, I would say that in our clan he's hes probably the best when it comes to the stoned hobo, um, does does an excellent job and I'm going to give a couple or, or, or at least one example um, from him. Uh, Bella, Bella came through not with one fresh triple but with two, so a fresh six pack, props to Bella, great job there. And then, of course, McG, who always comes through in a, uh, a clutch when we need him, um, and he pulled off a six-pack. Uh, obviously, these guys had some pretty tough bases. If you watch my recaps, you'll you'll see that um, we, we usually have at least twice this number of Town Hall 9 six-packs, uh, but um, Sports, Bella, and McG were it this war. At any rate, props to you guys, and let's go in and watch the replays. Okay, so as you can see, or as you already saw, uh, final score was 79 to 77. Um, if we scroll through here, uh, you'll see that the difference was at uh, Town Hall 10. Um, we, we had um, a couple of more Town Hall 10 triples. Uh, notice that um, Jamie was not hit at all. Uh, that was for a good reason, actually. Um, there was uh, a bit of a mix-up on the uh, Town Hall breakdown. Um, when the challenge was accepted, and uh, number 13 here, Three Dot Curse, uh, is actually a Town Hall 10, and our number 13 is a Town Hall 9. Uh, so in order to fix this, uh, which is it was a it, it was an honest mistake, no no big deal. Uh, what we did is um, Three Dot Curse sat out of the war. Um, Jamie sat out one attack, and, and we had one other person who sat out an attack. So um, essentially, uh, we canceled out um, two attacks, uh, and then those two bases, so neither of them were hit, to make things fair. Um, if we look at our bases, of course, a, a clan like WHF2, you know they're going to clear all of our Town Hall 9s. Um, if we just flip through here, you can see... We had um, a bully attack there, bully attack there, bully attack there, three, a bully attack there, bully attack there, oof, bully attack there. Um, so yeah, uh, on on the other side, I believe we had to use three bullies. Um, if we flip through these, yep. So Nate, uh, that was a bully attack on 15, a bully attack by Gino on uh, number six, uh, 16, and I thought there might have been one more. Yep, Effie, and if you watch our channel, Effie is uh, JP's uh, Town Hall 10, uh, not JP Weiser, um, our other JP. Uh, and that was it as far as bullies on our side. Okay, um, so I have a few different recap or replays that I want to show here and let's start um, as I usually do at the bottom um, we're gonna look at number 28 number 28 was tripled by rising savage she's fairly new uh, to Invicta though um, she spent quite a bit of time over in swarm and she's coming in here with a dragon queen swap um, I love this I don't see it very often um, but uh, it means that she's 
she's planning on starting uh, her kill squad, usually from the opposite side, right? And that she doesn't think she's got the distance to get to that queen with the kill squad. So, dragon swap, still got plenty of, of army up there. Two golems come down, she starts setting her funnel with her wizards, very efficient with her wizards. Um, in comes the wall breakers, and fortunately that golem reroutes and comes back over to uh, the opening. Great funnel. Um, the bowlers are in. Jump is down. Still got a dragon up over there cleaning up. Uh, we saw we saw a fair amount of golems and CCs this time, and I, I don't know if uh, the idea is just burn up time, or if the idea is that we're, they're hoping for for a Valk. Of course, you, you don't see a lot of Valks anymore in in war, but um, still some, I suppose. Everybody always has a couple, but. A couple of Valk attacks. At any rate, hogs start coming in um, around the backside. Notice she's got one heal left for those hogs, and it comes down right now after they've hit that giant bomb. Uh, still has a poison, which she's going to drop here pretty soon, I think, on those skellies. There we go. Um, hogs are finishing up these last few defenses. Oof, spring trap. Uh, I, I tell you that the, the biggest hog killer right now tends to be spring traps. Sorry about that. Um, at any rate, one defense left. That's it. Knock out those skellies, and it is cleanup time. Nice job. Rising Savage. Tree stars in the bag. Swag queen ability. All right. The next thing that we are going to watch is number 23. Um, and so this is Messi, or as, as we call him, uh, Rocky. He has another account um, that's that's called Rocky, and he is coming with a bolo or a go bolo, depending on you know uh, what you like to call it. At any rate, um, starts out with a couple of golems here, setting his funnel. Um, I thought this was really interesting because oftentimes with the go bolo, you don't see this double jump. You see it a lot with. Um, the, the stoned hobo or, or some variation on hobo. Um, but he comes with, with a, um, oh, there we go. <laughs> that Tesla pops and pulls those golems back in. But uh, he, he's coming in with a couple of jumps, I think with the idea of wanting to push all the way to get that queen. Now you can see as long as he gets into the center compartment, he's going to get that expo. He's going to get three air defenses for sure. And so... Uh, there goes that next jump, and you'll see actually he didn't even need it. Um, going to get the expo anyway, going to get that third air defense. The queen is His queen is going to step up here in a second and take out this enemy queen. Notice that both of those air defenses were also, uh, or I mean both of those expos were also on air. And I think a lot of times we get concerned about, oh, there goes the queen. We get concerned about doing an air attack when expos are on air, um, but... You can see if, if you bring that kill squad and you push it in deep, you can take out all of those expos with your kill squad anyway, then it's not a problem. It's not an issue. And in fact, um, we see guys all the time uh, who are able to do these air attacks uh, without even getting um, the expos with their kill squad and instead getting the expos with their uh, air attack just using the, the, the hounds as tanks. Usually a good rule of thumb is as long as you can get three air defenses, you're probably going to be alright with expos. Uh, at least you'll be able to get one of those expos. Um, if you can only get two air defenses and you're going to have an expo, that might cause you a little bit of problems. It depends on how quickly you can get to those expos or those air defenses. But um, at any rate, uh, that is it. Nice job, Rocky. Tree stars in the bag. All right, um, next we are going to watch Sports Buff. And so Sports does a stoned hobo here on number 21. Um, and like I said, he had a six-pack. This is a fresh triple, you can see. Um, oh, wait, this wasn't a fresh triple. I know it wasn't because I failed on this base. Uh, all right, so he starts by setting his funnel up there with a baby dragon. And this looks like it might be a bad entry. Look at how far away that entry is from the queen. And it might not be so bad if he has two jumps, but he only has one. 
Um, I like the way that he did this, though. Uh, you'll see here in a second. Um, these bowlers under Rage are just so OP, and he decides he's just going to use a Rage to rip through some of these walls. And so uh, bowlers go in, golems go in, jump spell's going to come down, and it's a perfect jump. It covers that just the edge of that um, other compartment right there so that he's able to get all the way up into that spot. Now, ideally, you want to get into this L-shaped area, backwards L-shaped area, um, so that you've got access to the expo, you've got access to the queen, because she will jump that wall and bowlers will throw stuff over the side. But um, you can see he's only deployed a couple of his hogs. Um, he took out that 3 o'clock compartment, and now the rage is down for... The, uh, to bust through that next wall. They bust through it easily. Double poison on the CC, and now it's just clearing out these last few defenses. So he had really three point defenses left, and then a couple of wizard towers and air defense, and that's all that the hogs needed to take out. Uh, kill off those skellies, um, drop, drop the cleanup troops, and that is it. Tree stars in the bag. Nice job, sports, and great water, bud. Alright, who do we have next? Oh, you know, a recap just wouldn't be a recap if I didn't have a, a Heartless attack in here. And so Heartless, I mean, I think this guy prides himself on just coming up with kind of the craziest armies that you can find. And so if you have a look here, we've got uh, four healers, um, seven Valks, two Pekkas, um, and then uh, seven, um, seven Loons. And so... <laughs> Uh, you might think Queen Walk, you might think um, Pekka Smash, and and it's kind of a mix of, of all of that. Uh, let's go ahead and have a look. Uh, scouting this base, um, he realized that he's able to um, enter at a spot where he can get both of those Expos pretty easily and all three air defenses, or all four air defenses, by jumping into the center. And so that's the goal here. He's going to come from the south, come from the 6 o'clock, um, He's going to jump in to that middle area, so starts with kind of um, a very brief uh, queen walk. Had set that funnel, so no need for wall breakers. Um, you've got all of those heavy, heavy DPS troops, and they come. In with the bowlers. Uh, rage is down. Um, and I like this rage placement. It's going to allow these troops to rip through. And right as they meet that uh, CC, then those healers fall under rage. Healers are going to take a bit of a hit here from that uh, air defense. And then they're going to start taking it from the other air defense. Um, but uh, you can see these uh, bowlers are still up and they're still rocking. That king is going to bust through that wall but not get to the queen. Um, the, uh, his, his queen steps up, pops her ability, and you can see he's starting the loons working in around where the air defenses are already down. Soon as that goes down, loons start coming in on that side. And he's just got a few defenses left here to take care of, and it is going to be GG. So, let's speed it up just a little bit. There we go. Look at all those troops up yet, though. Pekkas, bowlers, got a healer on the Pekkas, um, got a couple of Valks going. Uh, with those heavy DPS troops, or heavy HP troops, um, and, and the few defenses that are left, the only, the only problem here is going to be time, and time will not be a problem for Heartless. Uh, they'll, they'll knock through that wall in no time. And that is it. Tree stars in the bag. Good job, bud. Nice creative uh, attack as well. Okay, next. Um, we are going to go with Blonde. Blonde hit number 17 with a blue veiler. You know, I was talking to Wiser a bit about the blue veiler, and he's been using it a lot. And I think it's, I mean, uh, it's such an overpowered attack uh, if done correctly. Now, one of the issues that has to happen is you've got to be able to either avoid or take out um, the air defenses that might be affect that might affect the bowler walk 
or the queen walk. Now, fortunately, this base is set up perfect for it, right? Got two air defenses right on the outside that are easily accessible. So he starts his queen up there. Um, queen is going to be able to take out that air defense before it even touches her healers. Um, he set, she, she, sorry, sorry, blonde, has set her funnel uh, very nicely so that um, up here she'll be able to deploy her Valks to take out that, and then they will go straight in right here. She'll be able to deploy her bowlers and start her bowler walk, and that's exactly what happens. Um, I do believe that her bowlers kind of mix up a little bit. Notice that she waited to do all of that until the CC came out, until she was able to lure that CC, or not lure, but pull the CC with the queen. Um, and this this raid is on. So uh, queen is, is moving over there, just took out the enemy queen. Um, so the, the value that you get from that, that queen walk, is supposed to be, um, if possible, an air defense. But if not, you want to be able to get the uh, CC troops and the enemy queen. So uh, <laughs> I, I assume Blonde was set, sweating in a little bit there when those she drops that heel and those Valks decide to run right around it. But they do wind up coming back over to the heel. Now, unfortunately, uh, Skellies pop and they're air skellies, and there is nothing there that can help take out air skellies. She drops, as you see, a little wizard in there running in to try and get to those air skellies, but just just a little bit late, I think. Oh, no, it does survive. Gotcha. All right. Um, so queen is still moving around. We've got bowlers in the middle. We've got um, valks in the middle. That air defense that they just took out wind up taking out the healers that were that were on those Valks, but at this point it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, we've got three defenses left, we're not going to count that air defense, and now really just one defense left, and it's a splash damage that isn't going to do a whole lot to these high HP troops. That is it, cleanup is down, and it is tree stars in the bag. Nice job, Blonde. Alright, last one, last Town Hall 9 we're going to watch, and we'll look at some Town Hall 10 triples, is Lee. And so, this is a very interesting um, attack, you'll see why. Uh, Lee is going to wall break in here, um, but he has two jumps, and actually a wall break in with a jump right here on top of that clan castle gives you access to the entire base almost. I mean, the, the outskirts are still there, but those outskirts are good to be uh, for the um, uh, hogs to take out. So, uh, at any rate, golems decide that they're going to walk, uh, all but that little golemite who's in there. Um, but uh, it actually works out very nicely having those golems walk. Um, the bowlers are in. They're going to hop into the center here in just a second. There they go, and golems are continuing to walk around, kind of a, a, um, a slow mover here, but uh, all of the bowlers are now dead because look at those three big bombs, or two giant bombs and a uh, bomb tower were there, um, killed the bowlers, but hogs are doing some major work, uh, still 13 hogs in the bag. Uh, now he starts bringing in some more of these hogs. Um, heal up right there. And the only thing that's going to be left are these three point defenses. He uses a, a giant to tank, knowing that he's going to need some sort of tank for those point defenses. And that is it. It is tree stars in the bag. Time for cleanup. And we swag a jump spell. You don't often see a jump spell swag. Those usually have a pretty specific purpose. But... Nice job, Lee. Tree stars in the bag. Good job, buddy. Okay, let's get on to some Town Hall 10 triples. We're going to start with Junior. Um, Junior is coming with a uh, Shattered Goho. Um, he's got uh, five bowlers and uh, um, more bowlers in the CC. And you're going to see when he deploys this, he's going to save one bowler. I'm pretty sure this is the attack where he saves one bowler, yeah. And it was really, really smart. Um, so the, the plan is, and he knows this, he's going to have to work his way all the way around the base, and his hogs are going to end up over at that 3 o'clock spot. And as they're working on those top defenses, 
he's going to use a bowler to take out those closer defenses and let hogs kind of tank for him. But at any rate, we'll get there when we get there right now. Kill squad is in. Hogs start coming in to take out these edge defenses. And you'll see, I mean, this this attack at, at Town Hall 10 works a lot, um, a lot like it does at Town Hall 9. Uh, the idea is to push in deep. Um, you've got a few more tricks up your sleeve when you're using a, a, a Town Hall 10. And so he freezes that second um, that second Inferno Tower. It was able to take out the first Inferno Tower with his kill squad. Hogs come in. Now his hogs are going to come out of the last heal here. They're going to hit a giant bomb, followed immediately by a wizard tower, which just is, I mean, you can see those hogs have very low health at this point. It's, they're about single shots from these archer towers. And so, as soon as the archer tower locks onto the hogs, he drops a bowler down here to start hitting that archer tower. And that is it. Nothing left but cleanup. It's going to be tree stars in the bag. Very, very cool attack, Junior. Nice job, bud. And a swag queen ability to go with it. There it is. All right. Uh, the last one we're going to show, I, I also feel like it's, it's almost not a recap if I don't show a Town Hall 10 triple by Seb. Let's see what Seb does here. Um, this is a very cool attack. He's going to come from 12 o'clock, start setting his funnel. Um, he's going to try, uh, he really, what he wants to do is bust in right at that intersection, right there, right where the heel went down. So he sends in some wall breakers there. And he is, I mean, the goal was to try and clear out those two defenses on the edge so that the wall breakers will go straight in. They went to where they were supposed to. Um, he busts in, in with the kill squad, which is Valks. You see that he's only got, he's got four hogs down here, and they're going to serve a very specific purpose. It's just to take out those couple of defenses right there. You've got a cannon, and you've got an expo. And that's what those hogs were planned for. King is moving down. Um, golems are still pushing through. And of course, still got a bunch of bowlers up over here. Finally, hogs get that uh, air defense down with a little help from bowlers and, and the queen. That hog is, at, at 9 o'clock is not going to finish off that wizard tower. That, that thing will be left standing for a little bit anyway. But uh, As you can see, I mean, we've got three archer towers and um, a cannon up, and that's it as far as point defenses go. We've got a couple of mortars that we don't really have to worry about and then that wizard tower up there. but uh, Queen still has her ability, and um, you'll see in a second here, man, this uh, a level 40 queen, right? When, when they pop their ability, oh, that's right, they get stuck. They miss their jump spell. Um, when this level 40 queen pops her ability, she can rip through these high HP buildings like it's nothing. It just like, as a Town Hall 9, it amazes me watching this. So I think, I think she will, I, I think she three shots um, in just a second here. And Seb is very patient with this. But right about now, he's going to pop it. One, two, three, three shots on, a, on an elixir storage. And down goes that last point defense. Uh, still got a Valk up, a few archers up, and that bowler. Queen is going to bust through the wall here, and it is cleanup time. That is it. Nice job, Seb. At any rate, um, it was a great war. Uh, props to WHF, very classy, um, working with us to uh, make sure that this was an even war. Um, at any rate, uh, I am hoping to get a video put up here soon. We just had a, a random elite war with LP3 Chiron. That's going to be... Uh, uh, our our uh, our warm up because we've got them on the schedule for an arranged war coming up here very soon. Uh, that's it for me. Um, I'm I'm signing out and I will see you next time. <laughs>